In this tutorial, you will learn how to make a program in Scratch, Scratch that converts decimal numbers to binary. And the number they enter in can only be up to 16, just to make this a little bit simpler to make. What you're going to do is declare some variables, and I've already done that. Binary output 1, 16, 2, 4, and 8, and that represents the columns in binary. So 2 to the power of 0 would be the 1, 2 to the power of 1 would be 2, 2 to the power of 2 would be 4, 2 to the power of 3 would be 8, and 2 to the power of 4 would be 16. I've also declared a variable for the user number, so whatever they enter in in decimal, and that's the number we're going to convert into binary. It's important that you have a good understanding of how binary works and how it can be, how decimal numbers can be converted into binary before you start this program. We have our one click flag is clicked, and then I've set all the variables equal to zero. That's called initializing. We want to give them an initial value of zero so that if the user restarts the program, it will reset all the variable values. You can then go ahead and ask the user for the number. So under sensing, ask and wait, enter a number between one and 16. Probably should say inclusive, but so there's the answer block we move over and we're going to set the user number. So the variable user number equal to whatever the user types in for the decimal number. Once we have that, we have to check how big the number is. So we need a series of if statements. So just a regular if then without the else. So we'll say if, now we're going to need a few operators here. We need division and a greater than. We're going to need an or, and I'll show you how to put all these together in a moment. And we need another division and an equals. So this gets a little bit tricky here, so bear with me. First, we want to take the user number and divide it by 16. So we're going to check if the number is actually 16 or greater. So we're going to say if the user number divided by 16 is greater than one. Now it should be, should be greater than one, or it should, should not be, sorry, greater than one since it should only go up to 16, but just in case. Um, or the user number divided by 16 is equal to one. And that's entirely possible if the number is 16. If you divide 16 by 16, you'll get one. So that's just checking if there's enough in the decimal number to have one in the two to the power of four column, the 16 column. So once we've checked that, if it is indeed equal to one, then we can set binary output one sorry, binary output 16 rather, to one, because that means there is enough for the two to the power four column. We then wanna check if there's any remainder. So if there is a remainder, we have to take that and put it into the next section so, and to see if there's enough for other columns to be filled. So we'll set the user number equal to, so go under operators, the user number Oh, I didn't mean to do division operators. We're doing modulus division, actually. So we'll take that user number and modulus divide it by 16. There we go. So our user number is now going to be replaced with the value of user number modulus divided by 16. You now need a different if statement, a separate one we wanted to go through each one of these. So now it will do this if this part, if the user number, what's left over the user number, it divided by eight is greater than one or equal to one. So now we're checking if there's enough for the eighth column or the two to the power of three column in our binary number. So we'll take, we're going to check. So again, we need all of this stuff. So I'm just going to take this and duplicate it. 
It's a little bit easier. And then we can change the number 16 to 8 because now we're checking if it's if the number divided by 8 is greater than 1 or the number divided by 8 is equal to 1. And if it is, you can duplicate these sets of blocks and just change the variable to binary output 8. So we're, we're going to set the 2 to the power of 3 column equal to 1. And the user number, we will replace the value of the user number with the user number modulus divided by 8 to save the remainder. Again, we need another if statement, just a regular if then. And oops, just make sure that's in there. Yep, it is. And I'm going to duplicate, put it into there. And now we're down to four. So the two to the power of two column. You can duplicate these blocks as well and just change everything to four. So binary, set the binary number for the four column equal to one if there's enough for the four column to be filled. And we'll modulus divide it by four to check if there's any remainder to see if we have a one or a zero to enter in the last couple of columns. So we do the same thing, duplicate this part. Whoops, didn't du duplicate enough, so just throw that out. There we go. And we're going to do two now for the two to the power of one column. And you can also duplicate these two blocks, change it to two. Find out if there's a remainder after you divide it by two. And then take that remainder and put it into the last if. Duplicate the last, that block. So we've replaced the, the value to one, and we're checking if there's enough for the one column, which is two to the power of zero column. And you're actually only going to need one of these blocks because once we're down to the last column, there's not going to be any remainder. So you can just delete that. Whoops, if it'll let me. There we go, and we'll change that to one. So then if this is true, then we'll put a one in the last column. Finally, we can go ahead and output the binary number to the user. To output the binary number to the user under looks, we'll go to say, and we're going to need a series of join blocks. So I think we'll probably need about five. So I'm going to throw five in there. Can always add more later. So the binary number then, because usually there's eight bits in a byte, and for this we have done the first five columns, we need three more. So I'm going to put three zeros, so three more bits for the zeros, just so we end up with a number that has eight bits for the byte. And here we're going to stick in the binary output 16 in the next one. So that's the two to the power of four column, and then we've got the binary output oops, eight for the two to the power of three column. Then we've got the two to the power of two column, two to the power of one column. So let's say we've got 16, eight, four, two, and one. So that extra join in there. Let's put in binary. Let's try it out. So enter a number between 1 and 16. Let's try 16. So it should be 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm, let's have a look at that. Oh, I see what I've done. I've actually 
accidentally replaced my three zeros. So I'm going to move everything over. We just won't have that word in there. Bring them all over a little bit. This is where we're debugging our program, checking where the errors are. Most of us take a few runs before it's perfect. Okay, let's try again. So 16, and you can see 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So there's eight bits that make up the byte. This is the binary code for the number of 16. If you type in 16 into your keyboard, it will eventually get translated into machine code, which your computer is in, and that's in zeros and ones. And this is the number for 16. Let's try it again and try out the number 15. There we go. So we have one in the eights column, four column, two column, and one column, and that all adds up to 15. Perfect. So again, that program is a little bit challenging, but it's a good way to show you an application of exponents for two and the decimal system as well for breaking up into columns.